I'm back with PJ Kwong. We're going to preview. And Garth. Yeah, and Garth. and Garth. Welcome to Garth. He can share his opinions, too, about the skate. third stop of the Grand Prix series. This is the first year it's been in Finland. It's in Helsinki, and it takes place this weekend from Friday until Sunday. Let's start with the men. The obvious favorite here, two-time Olympic champion, Yuzuru Hanyu. He had a little bit of a rough outing in the free skate at the Autumn Classic, which you attended. He typically seems to be a really hit or miss skater in the Grand Prix throughout his career. He's had one really strong event, the other event. Eh. What do you think about his chances here? What what do you expect what do you expect his overall conditioning to be like at this point in the season? You know, I love talking to Zero Hanyu for lots of different reasons. Um, and one of the things I love about him is that he is still very young. So um, it's just um, for me, as you said, he isn't always at his very best very early in the season. Again, I think he's somebody who keeps his eye on the prize, and the, the prize is really much later on in the year. Uh, I think it's really interesting that he's going up against training mate uh, Jun Wan Cha from South Korea, who beat him in the free program at that Autumn Classic event. So I'm interested to see, I fully expect you, Zuru Hanyu, when he's being chased, and I mean really chased, he has a tendency to sort of like say, okay, this is for real, I'm going to actually, you know, pull myself together. If it's just kind of like a little bit of a distraction and just sort of a, a stop somewhere else um, in terms of his competitive season, I don't see him as nearly focused. but. I think that he's going to be very focused at this competition. I think that um, uh, the fact that he wasn't at his best for um, uh, Autumn Classic and the fact that he is competing against his training mate, I think that makes a, a bit of a difference. Mikhail Kolyada from Russia. He is the reigning world bronze medalist. He won both of his challenger events earlier this season. Yep. He's, he's one skater that, he, you know, pops are a really big thing with his quads. But yep. he really racks up the points with some of the jumping elements in, in the later parts of his program. Do you think he potentially could win here? No. There, I've said it. That's what I mean. If, if I, My experience with Hanyu and watching him is if he is being uh, challenged legitimately by real possible uh, sort of threats to uh, the title, then I think it has a tendency to sort of like uh, wake him up a little bit and say, Ooh, I better get I better get cracking here. Uh, Kolyada is a beautiful skater. And do you know what? I love um, the power and the speed that he puts in across the ice. Um, but I think that um, his consistency isn't where he wants it. It's not certainly where I want it. He is certainly somebody to keep your eye on, but I really think it's Han Yu's to lose. Now, there's some other wild cards in that event. Um, Boyan Jin, Mikhail Brzezina. Uh, Mikhail, of course, um, medaled at uh, Skate America. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to happen again here, but you never know. Those two, those two men can really skate lights out at times, so I think that uh, it's going to be a really fun event to watch. Two other names that are potential spoilers and trying to make names for themselves. Andre Lazukin of Russia and Alexei Krasnason of the United States. He won the Junior Grand Prix final last season, had to withdraw from the Junior World Championships. But this is a skater that, if he's on, really, really, really strong technically. What is it with you guys and the strong technically? You got your Nathan Chen. I mean, seriously. Um, you know, I think that this is going to be... You, you, you just never know. I mean, this could be the event where you know he rises to the occasion and takes the whole thing but i find that with the men they seem to need a couple more se they seem to need at least one season to make that transition from junior to senior it seems to be that in uh women's and in pairs you can go from junior world champion to world champion to olympic champion to whatever you want but i don't know that it happens as easily in the men and i think because there are so many um, sort of bigger risk, bigger reward elements that are in men's figure skating. So um, uh, I'm hoping that everybody has a great outing, though, and that it's a, a terrific competition. Moving on to the ladies, this is our first chance to see Olympic champion Alina Zagitova on the Grand Prix this year. She's yep. already competed a few times, and her scores are astronomical if you compare that to the rest of the ladies this season. So, you know, she's the obvious favorite here. What do you want to see from her skating this season? You know what? Uh, first of all, um, 
you know, I, I was never one of the ones who was angry at her putting all those jumps in the second half because if you had the kind of um, strength and stamina that you could do that, hats off to you. Um, I loved her style. I think that she is a sensational skater, so I am a huge fan. Um, I think that all she can continue to do really is to sort of evolve it artistically. But that said, you know, her, her ballet free last year was exquisite in my opinion. So if she can continue to deliver artistically on things that she knows how to do, I think she's going to be just fine. So, and you're right, she's won, I think she's competed twice and she's won easily um, uh, everything that she's gone into. So I don't expect that this is going to be any different. Kerry Sakamoto is coming off an excellent competition at Skate America, yep. ended up with the silver medal there. She yep. pro She's probably a lock here for a silver medal. Isn't it wonderful, again, to see that kind of joyful skating? I think that she is, uh, first of all, I don't know how she gets across the ice and sort of like the two cross cuts that she does, and next thing you know, she's from one end to the other. Her strength and her speed are just sort of unbelievable. Now, I would never say that she's a lock on silver because Zagitova was supposed to get the world title, and we saw what happened with her. So you just never know when the flu's going to hit. You just never know when somebody's going to twist an ankle. Um, so... Uh, all things being equal, if Zagitova skates like she does, then Sakamoto will come second to her. But uh, that's the interesting thing about figure skating. You just don't know for sure what's going to happen. But she's she's wonderful. Speaking of flu and, and viruses, Luna Hendricks had to withdraw from Skate America after the short yeah. program because of a stomach virus. She could be bronze medal favorite here, actually. What do you think? I would love for that to happen for her. This is somebody who's got, you know, a body of work. Um, and I'm not sure that she's ever really uh, garnered as much recognition as maybe she she could. So for her to be able to sort of land on, on a step of the podium in Helsinki, I think would be great for her career. And I think that it would be a real confirmation of the talent and the work that she's put in. Also competing here, two Finnish ladies, Vivica Linfors and Emmy Peltinen and Russian Stanislava Konstantinova. We ended up seeing it's my her favorite name, by the way. Yeah, so long. We saw Konstantinova at Worlds last year. She finished 19th, really disappointing free skate. She's another one you can't count out. I mean, she really, really delivered at Russian Nationals last year in a field that we know is endless with talent. Oh, my goodness, yes. If, yes. If, if, if anybody were, were to hypothetically challenge for that bronze medal, who do you think it would be? That's who I think it would be. Uh, Konstantinova because um, again when you are coming off a season where you didn't deliver what you thought you could especially at the world championships um, I think that that gives you further motivation to be able to sort of really pull it together and um, uh, sort of deliver now Finland home you know that's also gives you a bit of a bit of a confidence boost perhaps but I think Konstantinova is probably the way to go Moving on to the Paris competition, should be a battle between Russian Zabiako and Enbert and Della Monica and Guarize of Italy. Who do you think has the best chance here to come away with the title? Well, um, you know, I I have pegged Zabiako and Enbert um, as taking it. I think that um, the free programs in particular, um, uh, Della Monica and Guarize, it's good. It's very good. I mean, I just was watching the stuff on YouTube. So, um, you know, what they come up with and what they deliver in, in Helsinki, of course, will be different. But I think that um, uh, the Russians, again, have the edge. They have a beautiful match. They've got a great line. They've got great elements. So, um, and I like their material. So the other ones I want you to watch out for are the uh, junior world champions. Um, they are somebody that I hope make an easy transition to seniors because, again, watching them on YouTube, um, I think that they've got great potential. Pavlyuchenko and Kodikin is who you're talking about. Uh, Absolutely. We, we also, last season, the, the buzz was around the North Korean team, Ryan and Kim. Yep. Yep. They w had a really, really steady climb up the standings. They're right outside the top 10 in the world. And we also have Stilato and Bartholomew from the United States. She yes. is now 35 years old. She took a uh, 16-year break, and she's skating better than ever. You know, and that is one of my favorite feel-good stories. If ever you thought that you can't do something, um, just look at her. 
um, because Deanna is living proof that nobody gets to decide for you who you are going to be. So um, I love the the inspirational story. I think that they I think that they've got they're kind of outgunned in this event. I think, um, but you know what? Who knows? And again, a great skate could make all the difference. Finally, the dance competition, Guignard Fabri, excellent showings this year so far. They have a silver medal yep. at Skate America, looking to book their ticket to the Grand Prix final. They're up against Stepanova and Bukin of Russia. This was the IT team last year, at least until yep. the Olympics. We know they weren't able to compete in the Olympics. Showed up to the World Championships, maybe not the result that they wanted, but I still think there's something about them that you really need to watch in this next quad. Between the two of them, who do you who are you, who's your favorite? Stepanova and Buchan, I like a lot, and um, I love the fact that they sort of take me back to a time um, where uh, beautiful match, beautiful physical match, great lines, great unison, all of those things really mattered. And um, again, I I like that team a whole lot. And if you put uh, Sinitina and Katsalapov against Stepanova and Buchan, I like Stepanova and Buchan better. For me, they just sort of check off more boxes in terms of what I'm looking for. Um, Guignar and Fabri, I think, have done a genius job at capitalizing on their many strengths and minimizing um, some of their uh, disadvantages. I don't think that they are the world's best physical match in terms of an ice dance team. So, you know, my eye is usually looking at one or the other um, of the two skaters rather than looking at them as a whole. But again, full marks for the amount of work that they've had to do in order to uh, get to where they are today. And uh, they performed beautifully at Skate America. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I think it's neck and neck. It could go either way, but I think that it's going to go to the Russians. Battle for third place, maybe potentially between three teams. You have a Spanish team, Hurtado and Kaliavin, and then you have two American teams, McNamara and Carpenter, and then Carrera and Panamarinko. McNamara and Carpenter skated at Skate America, a really solid technically fourth place yep. in that field. You have Absolutely. Carrera and Panamarinko, who have skated very well so far this season, have two medals on Challenger Series. And then you have the Spanish team Gee. is right outside the top 10 in the Olympics. Between these three teams, who do you think is going to come away with the bronze medal? You know what? That's a really tough call. But I have to say, I really have my hope set on Lorraine McNamara and Quinn Carpenter. I like this team a lot. I think that they're quite dynamic. Um, I like their unison on the ice. I like their uh, charisma. So um, of the three teams, Sarah Hurtado, you know, I love. Um, and when she was with Adria Diaz, I love the two of them together. Um, they've each moved on to other partners, and that's great. But I just was so enchanted by um, Quinn and Lorraine at um, Skate America that that's, that's kind of the team that I'm thinking will sneak ahead of those three. Once again, the competition runs from Friday until Sunday, and this is the very first Senior Grand Prix in Finland. Thanks again to PJ. Love doing Thank this with you. you. We're Me halfway too. through this. We're almost halfway through the series. We're halfway through the previews. Can't wait to do this again next week. Me too. I'm looking forward to it, Tony. Thank you so much. Thank you.